Uncle, Uncle, Uncle O.F., pray for us while you're up here. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful to thee today for all the many blessings that thou hast seen fit to send our way. We thank you for the beautiful sunlight of uh, this wonderful Lord's Day. We thank thee for clear skies above our heads and for the air that we breathe, the shelter over our head, the food that thou hast provided, and life itself more precious than any of all the gold of this world. And as we come here and assemble ourselves in this fashion this afternoon, we pray for each one present, yes. which represents each home out yonder somewhere. Yes. O oh God, Thou dost oh, love these dear yes. people, and yes. we love them. Thou dost love us, or we have never been here. Lord, pray that Thou will bless each one present and help them to grasp a new hold upon God and things eternal. Yes. This whole world's not our home. We're just oh, passing thank through. God. Thank God. And, oh, we don't know the condition of this world such as it is today, but what... Thou shall soon come to catch away the bride. Help us to be ready. Bless each waiting heart. Guide us and direct us in everything that's done and said. And we'll praise thee forever, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For that wonderful prayer. Uncle Odd, will you come preach for us today? Come preach for us. Come on. Here, we've got a Bible there. Have you got your Bible with you? The Bible, the, the Scripture. The Scripture says, be instant in season and instant out of season. And uh, we'll get this stuff, we'll get this clutterman out of your way, oh, and we'll... I won't call this preaching. I imagine you won't before it's over with, but i tell you what I wouldn't do. I always said that I ever had a chance or an opportunity to speak for my Jesus, that I'd be glad to do so. I'd like to ask everyone here a question. You don't have to answer it out loud. Just answer in your heart. Did you know that Jesus loves you? Yes. <laughs> You'll never know anything greater. And he loves me. The Bible said God is love. I, there's a scripture that comes to my mind that I would like to use. The first psalm, I'm sure that a number of you have uh, committed that to memory. But to you that haven't, <clears throat> let's go through it again. The psalmist David in his first psalm said, Blessed, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the day of judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now I'd like to enumerate that a little bit, our thinking. The first verse said, blessed, or blessed, is the man, which meant the woman as well, all of humanity. Blessed are they. Now there's a condition, if we expect to reap that blessing, there's a condition to be met. Blessed is the man. Our person. Now, a blessing is the greatest thing that God has for you and me. Think of that. If Rockefeller had sent you a check for a million dollars, you'd say, my, that, that was wonderful, wouldn't you? But there would come a time when that million dollars wouldn't be worth one red cent because we're going to leave this stage of action one of these days, and then everything's going to lose its value, but good old-fashioned heartfelt religion, salvation in our heart if we've been born again. 
So the greatest benediction that God could pronounce upon, pronounce upon man was his blessing. Blessed is the man. Now here's the condition. That if he walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, and there standeth in the way of sinners, and sitteth in the seat of the scornful. If he does all of those things, he is not eligible for this special blessing from God. For it is only to the redeemed, God's children. But it said he shall be like a tree. I, I get a great thrill out of that when I come to think about it. A man like a tree? Jesus only described heavenly things with natural things. <clears throat> and for our understanding, we cannot understand the things of heaven because we're in a world. So he had to come down to our level to make us understand. He said, that man that is blessed of God, that is qualified by turning his back upon the world and the things of sin, said, he shall be like a tree. Well, what kind of a tree? Well, not a thorn tree, not a, a wild orange tree, or not some wild a variety of a tree, or some scrubby tree, or some, one that's bent and warped, but a planted tree. Not a tree that's... A, a planted tree is always a select tree, isn't it? Who would go out and select an old scrubby tree to take home and plant it in a special place? But it was a select tree. It's like him to a select tree, the best there is. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, not out on the desert where it'll parch and die, but where its roots can go down and receive the moisture from Mother Earth to produce its fruits. So it's not only a select tree, but it's a fruit tree. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? A fruit tree. Some trees are not, don't have any fruit edible. So it is a fruit tree. For he describes the same, for he said, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You know, along sometime in July, we expect the Alberta peaches to be ripe, don't we? In his season, he shall be like a tree that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. That is that is something that the race of man can feed upon. Not only is it a fruit tree, but he said that his leaves shall not wither. And the, the pilgrim on his journey, as he treads the dusty path and comes over the hill, I think I, my mind's eye could see him as he shadows his eyes and he sees a shade in the distance yonder and he perks up. He said, my, a resting place, a cool place, a shelter from the scorching sun. He should be back. And the, leans back, he looks up, and he sees all fruit, and he begins to pluck and to eat. Now, I could go into a, a little explanation in my boyhood days in the old Alberta peach orchard when just a few of the peaches would remain on the tree, and for some reason, late frost or something had to, gotten the most of them, and just be a few on each tree, and my, they grow out of proportion and be huge things. And I can remember my boyhood days going up there and reaching up to get one of those peaches, and it'd be so ripe. I could just peel the peeling off with my fingers, pull it apart, and the juice run down my elbows. <laughs> it makes me kind of hungry right now to think about it, don't you? Hey, man, delicious fruit, satisfying fruit, not tattletale, not backbiting, not lying and stealing and cheating on your neighbor. But it shall bring forth his fruit in his seed. Now, remember, he's talking about you and me. Liken us unto this kind of a tree, not just an ordinary tree, not a thorn tree. That old thorn tree would be the one that backbiting and, and uh, abusing your neighbor and so forth. But a fruit tree bearing something that would be uh, pleasing to the taste of our neighbor, something would furnish shelter from the scorching sun as a passerby comes by, something that one that would be desired of all. He bringeth forth his fruit in the sea, and his leaf also shall not wither. He won't be disappointed for shelter of the sun. But whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Jesus said if the best you could do was just a glass of cup of cold water in his name, said you would in no wise lose your reward. That's, that's down to the bottom of everything, isn't it? That's the least anybody could do. 
he had leaf also, shall not with him, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so, like the chaff. And he shall bring forth this fruit of the seed, and the leaf also shall not with him, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There is a vast difference between the child of God, the Christian, and the sinner. The saint and the sinner, the Christian and the world. The Apostle Paul said, Come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. As if to say, unless we do, we'll be rejected and not received. So, I refer you to the first verse, Blessed is the man. Blessed is the person. Blessed of God. The greatest blesser there is, and the greatest blessing that man can qualify for is the blessing of God. I'd rather be able to, when I pillow my head tonight, and turn out the light, and close my eyes, to be able to be perfectly willing to turn my little business over to God and say, now, Lord, it's all in your hands. If you call me before morning, that'll be all right. If you let me stay here till I'm 100 years old, that'll be all right. I don't want to live one day longer than the Lord orders me to live, and I don't want to die one day sooner than he wants to call me. And just remember this wonderful thought, the devil hath not power to bump you off before time if you're a child of God. <laughs> That's why we're clinging to the old rugged cross, and one of these days we'll exchange it for a crown. May God bless you. I trust that every one of you are Christian. I don't know your heart. Search your heart and pray and seek God's will in your life. Hold to God's unchanging hand. And if I don't ever see you again in this world, I'll make a pledge to you that I'll do my part by God's help to meet you over in the glory land where no one ever grows old and no tears will be found, no heartaches and no sadness. God bless you. Thank Brother O.F. Lankford, Reverend O.F. Lankford, for this wonderful message. Isn't it wonderful that the Lord can lead? Isn't it wonderful that the Lord can lead? I just believe that the Lord led Brother Lankford to be here today to bring this wonderful message. I just appreciate it so much, and I just believe you do. This is Brother O.F. Lankford, an ordained elder in the Church of the Nazarene, and he pastored churches for many years, built large churches, did great work for the Lord, and still letting his light shine for the Lord and living for the Lord. You know, he was my pastor. And whether he knows it or not, he's still my pastor. You know, when he comes down, I'll just sort of lean on him and ask him something, and he'll tell me the answer, and it looked like I should have seen it all the time. Just looked like it. He just knew exactly what I needed and still my pastor. Such a sweet, precious Christian. And you know, the good thing about it, I, I believe he's, uh, they tell me he's going to build a house in this vicinity and we hope that he'll come back again and preach again, Brother Wilson. We want him to come back again. So wonderful to have him. So wonderful to have him. Do you have a song you could sing for us? Come and come and uh, I love to hear my uncle Odd. He he's a, I, he sings in the spirit and he does something to me. I think El is saying so much. I better pinch myself and see if this is really me. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm out of out of practice. But there is a song that's. It carries such a wonderful message. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings
change my soul.